And uh, this is my van, Vandoff. Vandoff the gray, Vandoff the white, depends on what time of year it is and where I'm at. It depends, uh, in, in Colorado, it's definitely uh, Vandoff the, the gray. This is Cashew. And this is my cat. He is just a baby and he only knows living on the road. So we travel full time in Vandolph. To be honest with you, uh, the reason that I got out on the road uh, might sound a little bit morbid. I, I just had a lot of loss in my life over a short period of time. And I realized that life really is very, very short. And so um, I didn't know van life was a thing. I just was uh, interested in finding more pure happiness and figuring out like who I authentically really am, not like trying to fit into all these places I've been told to be and, and the things I'm supposed to do. So I didn't know that van life was a thing. And I started car camp and then I realized I wanted something bigger and boom my whole world cracked open when I found Sprinter conversions so here I am well welcome to the kitchen we'll call it the kitchen for this purpose because when you live in 54 square feet it serves many purposes but first off I'll talk about it being my kitchen and to be honest with you I didn't really put much thought into its design before I put it all together. I of course spent a lot of time designing the whole rig and I had a checklist of things that I wanted in it. I didn't really think much about functionality and so that's something that I am um, a little bit eager to upgrade um, but I will be happy to show you all the things that work and maybe don't work in my system. So um, up over here I actually have all of my spices um, magnetized and this is fantastic. Uh, it works out very well for me. You can buy them already filled or you can fill them yourself. No they're actually very strong and they hold onto this um, this tray so a lot of the things in my van because I am a sentimental person and transitioning um, to living on the road uh, was a little difficult for me so there's all kinds of pieces of sentimentality and um, my childhood and where I come from in here so this particular tray was in my kitchen when I was growing up in Portland Oregon and so it's nice to now see it in my kitchen and I carry a little picture of my parents that I used to carry with me at sleepover when I was a kid so uh, I never have any problems with these falling off they're very strong and the magnets are just inside the lids so they're easy to adjust and um, easy to fill and they look pretty when you put them all in order of colors so uh, yeah so that's been super functional for me um, up here in uh, these cupboards I use this string to keep these things in place when I am driving so you can see I have these little hooks here so that is super economical. It works out well because if I got frustrated and I just wanted to cut them off, I could. The roll is like two bucks, but it's really easy to retie and I can reconfigure the things that are on the shelves. You see some of the stuff sticks out a little bit, so I can always be changing that up because I'm always tightening and retightening these straps. So. Up over here, I keep a few more kitchen goods. A magic bullet is always great. My go-to at all these van life potluck gatherings is a hummus, a really good kimchi hummus recipe. So uh, that may also makes my smoothies. And um, part of the, um, the darker side is that I travel with my parents on board. These are my parents and their remains. And so um, that's something that's really special for me. I get to take them on a lot of travels that quite frankly, they just never really got the chance to get to. So um, I don't think of it as a dark thing. I think it's awesome and beautiful and amazing and it's obviously one of my most cherished possessions in the van. So that's up there. Um, I've got bathroom stuff, uh, all my teeth and a couple of medications. Up here I've got a few dry goods for cooking and then books. All of those books were given to me as a gift so I kind of like to pass them along and, and receive them and um, keep them going. Um, and then let's see, I have a, this was supposed to be the spice rack, but it wound up a little too tight um, in order to salvage the entirety of the window. It wound up just being a junk tray. <laughs> and like, no matter how many times I reorganize it and try and make it look nice, that's just not really possible. It's the junk tray and I use everything in it constantly. So it's actually really helpful and handy to me. Um, down at the end here, I have my Wi-Fi hotspot. So this is what allows me to work on the road and get um, Wi-Fi strong enough for myself or t for other vanners that are parked with me. So that just hangs up there and stays plugged in. And let's see, oh, a picture of my dad. I took him skydiving uh, just after my 18th birthday. I'd take myself, so I took him. That's him on his 58th birthday. So he also uh, has a little bit of sense of adventure in him. I carry that on board to remind me to like, find the stoke in the day. So um, this is just a bar sink uh, that I found. Uh, 
in like a junkyard and I fixed it up and cleaned it up and it's got its own like jimmy rig system because I don't have a cap on the inside on this side so if I'm not careful water will just pour straight out so I've got it jimmy rigged there uh, so far it's been all right um, the sink has been the sink has been a challenge for me since day one water is kind of the enemy of the van and so uh, having leaks or issues is always a big fear of mine I spent the first eight or nine months with sink sitting here and with the jugs underneath and the pump in a box in my garage. And I, I was fine with the way that it worked because my system was simple, but um, it never spilled, it never failed on me. So eventually I put the pump in and I've had about eight floods since then. So I'm still struggling with that. Um, the size of the sink itself is um, okay for me. I'm able to wash my hair or shave my legs. It also holds all kinds of things when I'm driving. Um, I don't know if many people talk about that. Like that's like the catch all for while I'm moving around in the van. Um, these plants all stay in place because this is mounted to my counter, but um, I take them out and um, set them out so that they can get sunshine when they need more or just to bring ambiance to the outside of my van, the doorstep. And so um, the plants are actually the biggest like draw for the van for me. It brings a lot of life in here. It um, brings in fresh air, it, like recycles the air in here, which we could all use all the time is like fresher air in our vans. And I have no problems with them surviving close to the window. They get just enough sun and fresh air and I give them positive encouragement. And I find that I've had a great success, success with having plants in the van. And that's a really common question. So I'd be happy to answer any more questions about that. I've been collecting more. This aloe plant just came from a friend uh, on my journey here and she also gave me a jade plant that I'm really excited about. So hopefully those will take root and be new members of the family. Uh, the Instant Pot is wonderful. Uh, it's great for the roof. Obviously, the less dishes, the better. So it takes a minimal draw. It's a very small draw because I've got the three quart and um, it easily runs off of my inverter. Uh, down here, and just like your normal kitchen sink, I have like a little space for my sponges and my soaps. And then um, underneath, down here is where I just have a six gallon uh, fresh water and a six gallon um, gray water. And so um, it's really simple. There's not much to that. Uh, for now, it's great because I've never off grid too long. I also have another four gallon container in my trunk. So when I fill up, I start with 10 gallons and that's gonna last me about 10 days. And that's probably with like one like really good body and, and sh like hair, like shower sort of situation, daily cleaning my face, brushing my teeth, cooking, drinking for myself and for the cat. Um, about a gallon a day average is good for the two of us. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, it'd be great to have like a bigger system, um, just like fill it all up and not think about it. But right now it works out well for the balance of the van and the um, and you have to take into consideration the weight that that's going to put in, into your van to carry that much water and um, like I would need a bigger system because it would have to be in the back um, so for now it works for me I mean but wouldn't we all like more water <laughs> I mean except for Chris <laughs> he's got all the water okay so um, I keep my stove um, it's just a camp stove and I keep it in this drawer and so this was designed for convenience so that I could take it and put it um, out on my countertop or outside, maybe at a campsite. I also have a table on the inside of this door, so I thought maybe that would be versatile. Um, as it turns out, it's a real big pain, to be honest with you. It's big, and um, then you attach the propane to it, it's even larger, and um, it's not convenient. So like something as simple as just making coffee in the morning, I just need to boil water, and the whole process becomes kind of extravagant, especially if I've taken maybe some things from the bed and set them on the counter, or I've left some dishes out or something, then I've gotta make sure all of that is cleared before I can even just like start boiling water. As of right now, I'm not exactly sure how I would change it. I just would think more about convenience. Um, I'm thinking a little bit more about my design and how much counter space it really takes up. So like if I'm cooking, I have like essentially no um, like prepare space. So I end up using this space and just laying out like cutting boards and things like that. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. But the other thing that's not working is this like fridge freezer situation. I love my refrigerator freezer. It's a Dometic, like 62 or 65 quart dual zone. So it's got a freezer and a fridge. It's wonderful. I love it as its own device, but 
this drawer has been through um, a lot of different systems. I've tried rails, that didn't work. I've tried building a system um, to easier glide it in and out. That's not working. It's heavy and it's awkward. And at this point, I'm kind of the only one who can do it. It takes like weird little tricks to get it in and out. And so I can never send anybody like to the van to get something. And genuinely, like if I've thrown out my like neck, I just leave refrigerated things just on the refrigerator, like, or on the counter. like. Just don't put it away. Suddenly the refrigerator is dead to me because it's more of a pain in the butt to get out than anything. So I'll give you a little demonstration of that. So it slides all the way out and comes off of this lip here. That seems to be the biggest problem. So it's a great fridge freezer. Like I said, it's got lots of space. Um, I would recommend this model to anybody. I've actually already recommended it to a handful of people. And having ice in our in our freezer is essential for keeping both of us cool enough the cat and myself in hotter temperatures so i have ice packs that are kept stored in there so that he can lay on them on hot days i lay them out for him also an ice cube tray i mean obviously for bourbon but also for his water on hot days so i'm also the life of the party when i've got otter pops so that's a good way to make friends guys get yourself a freezer and fill it with otter pops so getting it back in is like the embarrassing and tricky part um, i've gone through lots of different models or different design ideas with lots of different people we have not quite come up with a system that works better than that that's pretty smooth actually but um, i wouldn't ask anybody else to do it because it's confusing and it probably just break worse so that being said, um, I don't have much room to work with because I am short and I wanted the entirety of my window available so it made sense for me to make a short countertop. It doesn't bother me to chop or to cook at this height and I thought that I would get the full length of the screen and open window area. What I didn't think about is that there's no wiggle room underneath, <laughs> that I have very little room to work with as far as making a different system for that refrigerator, um, whether it be like a pulley system or even wheels, there's there's nothing I can do for that. Um, it's all very tightly cut. And I think I would rather have the countertop a few inches higher and have that wiggle room underneath. Um, even the plumbing was a tough situation because they were close together um, in height, but apart from each other, um, like on, on different planes. So getting a pipe to snake through that was really difficult as well. I needed more space. I needed a higher countertop. So take that into consideration when you're building is what's going on underneath it, not just how great it will be to have this giant window. <laughs> Because it is great, don't get me wrong, but I paid the price for that, for sure. Yeah, uh, so the countertop is actually an alder that came out of Southern Oregon. I um, went down and harvested it myself, like found the piece and chose it. And uh, the countertop and the headboard are both live edge. They come from one large slab, and so I just had them custom cut for each of these, of these spaces. Um, it's also the alder that's used in all of the paneling and all of the trim around the cupboards and the drawers. So that's all the same alder. I did not seal it. <laughs> so I did a little bit of something on it, but like uh, this countertop has a lot of potential to be like much better. And so I look forward to, the sink is actually just sits right in, so it's not grouted or anything. And so I look forward to actually sitting down at some point soon and like lifting that all up and sanding it and sealing it and really bringing it back to life because it is fairly dull, but it's beautiful. But I mean, it just, it has, it has so much potential to pop. And I mean, if you look at just this alder being the same alder, um, I think it uh, could be uh, quite gorgeous. And maybe when I do that, I'll lift it up a little bit and build out underneath. <laughs> Since I just talked about the ceiling, I guess I'll go over that a little bit more. Um, these are just simple cut panels. They are not tongue and groove. Uh, that works really well for me because um, I didn't know much about expansion and how that would work. Also, it saved a lot of time and work to cut them like this rather than to cut them into tongue and groove because like I said, it was like a, a giant um, supply that we had picked up out of Southern Oregon. I pre-wired all the lights before I put up this uh, the paneling behind it and like up above it. Um, I started around the whole van. I sprayed it down um, with a uh, an, a rubberized undercoat, and that 
it was basically designed to go underneath the bed of a truck to protect it. And um, I, by spraying that, it's supposed to cut down on any condensation. So any like external wall, like metal, I sprayed that on and hopefully it'll cut down on condensation. From there, I put up insulation and it's like a wool denim based. And then I put the, um, put the panels up. So I wired uh, in between there and I use these LED lights. Uh, they run on two systems that are uh, right here. So I've got the front lights and then I've got the back lights and the back lights run actually on a dimmer, which is great and nice and sexy, right? No, I'm just kidding. It actually has a weird little low tone when it's, uh, when it's dim. So I usually just use the Christmas lights if I want low lighting. Um, but uh, I um, I love it. I mean, I'm absolutely in love with the um, with the wood and how it's worked out for me. Um, I like the color and it's all very unique. It was uh, curing during a heat wave, so there's all kinds of intricate, like interesting designs. And like I'm a botany science nerd, so I think that's cool. Um, if I uh, am gonna remodel or upgrade at any point, I'd like to salvage as much of this material as I can and repurpose it forward for the next build. Um, I did uh, the majority of this build myself and um, like every every vanner will know pretty much the first step you have to do is cut a hole in your van and put a fan in it is the first step it's also great that it's the first step because it's terrifying and empowering and so the very first time I had ever used a, a jigsaw and most of the time I had ever used like power tools the first time I was using them was when I put, you know put it on this van so I cut the hole for this max air fan uh, for myself there's a there's a couple of different fans on the market for myself I chose the max air it seems like a non-negotiable if it's raining outside I'm cooking inside and if I'm cooking inside the fan has to be on so the max air fan functions and runs in the rain stays open and I don't have to worry about any kind of leaks it wound up being an incredibly simple install and I'm very happy with it. I take it down and clean it regularly. Uh, it comes with a remote and like a room temperature setting so it is also kind of my thermostat in the room like I can kind of see what the temperature is and I just keep it mounted on the wall. Um, but it's easily accessible. It goes in and out. It can be like a freaking jet plane. And so uh, shout out to Jess and Mike from Van there who taught me this amazing trick I will probably use after we're done here. In case you guys can't tell, there's all kinds of flies coming in and out of here. And so when that happens, especially in the evening around like sundown, if I've got the door open and the lights on inside, bugs collect in here. And so I turn off the fan and take down the screen and I turn off all the lights on the inside and put my headlamp on. And then I put the headlamp towards the blades and I put it on the exhaust and then I just crank it up and out go all the bugs because they're going towards the light that's pointing right up there. And so the one, the stragglers can be kind of swept up and, and you know pushed in the right direction using the screen. And so that's my method of rapidly getting a lot of them up and out of the van. It's incredibly effective. Like, I mean, stupid effective so there's a there's your hot tip for bugs in the van if you don't have screens i hope to have screens on my doors someday but um that's just not a thing just yet uh because of the cat that's a whole tricky situation and then all the way down on the floor i did the same thing from the floor the rubberized undercoat and then um i ran some like strips to level the floor out so just some wood strips and um I used this, oh, then I used a, a subfloor. Now this is something I don't hear many people do, is that I cut the subfloor pieces and then I went and got a wood preservative. And what it is is basically the stuff that you um, paint, you like coat the feet of like fence posts. So stuff that's going into the ground and it's gonna be um, moist, it's gonna have be susceptible to mold and mildew and decay and bugs and rot and all those things. So it's gonna preserve it. So that was a little bit of a stinky process. I laid them all out and uh, rolled it out, but I've had zero issues with that so far. Um, the floor is a snap together laminate. It's like, um, so they say waterproof, but when you've had eight floods, I think you're really starting to test the warranty on that situation. So um, I think I'm after I've, I've installed it two years ago and I've put like 25,000 miles and I've been in all different kinds of climates. And like I said, many floods when the doors open and rain comes in, it gets wet, sun beats down on it and it gets obviously all of the usage is right here. So I can't really talk crap about how well it's held up so far. However, it's um, starting to lift a little bit. It's starting to show that it, it's wear 
but I, I ain't mad at it. I think it was a good choice, and um, it just it's just run its course. I mean, that's just the way it is when you use something all the time. So um, I think yeah, it's probably if I if and when I get to that point, I will up, I will switch it out with the floor. But I don't think I would make any vastly different choices. Just just freshen it up. Um, underneath my bed has a lot of great storage. Um, obviously, these are my mostly most used shoes. This is like my cleaning closet. I've got a little vacuum and a small hand broom and then a collapsible bucket that I use uh, for all kinds of things. So for cleaning, so that's like the cleaning closet. And then these drawers are like amazing. They're so deep. Uh, you can fit so much stuff in it. So this is like your, your average kitchen junk drawer. It's got coffee and batteries and tape and Sharpies and hot sauces and cat treats. <laughs> it's got it's got all this stuff, you know. We've all got one of those. I don't care where you live or who you are. Um, I use these little latches um, with uh, basically hitch pins to keep the drawers closed when I'm driving. They're easy to take off and put on. And here I have like dry kitchen storage. So um, I just keep all my stuff in jars to the best of my ability. And then this, oh, everybody wants to know what's in here. And I'm sure you're just dying, you're just asking yourself, but Sam, where do you do your business? I'm about to show you. So I have a lot of storage over here, deep enough for a whole wine bottle. Shout out to Outdoor Vino, I love them. Plastic bottles, so those are dope. And then I have a little commode situation over here. It's not, it's not like a, a composting toilet, it's not fancy, it's there in an emergency. It's there in a pinch, 5 a.m., shit happens. We've all been there. So it's nice to have, other than that, I mean, ultimately it's just a bucket um, and um, I use a bag and some compound. The compound is poo powder. Yep, uh, it, uh, it makes it, break, breaks it down, makes it so it doesn't smell bad, you know. Um, this is uh, my winter heating source. Um, in my bed, I use a hot water bottle. That's a great way to heat up the space while you're boiling water, and then you put it in bed and it's warm all night long. So this has lots of extra storage space, all my extra like cleaning supplies and stuff are down there. And then in here, extra garbage bags. So tried to, like I said, use pretty much every inch of the space that we could. And um, this obviously doubles as a bench seat, which is wonderful because on the inside of this door, is a table and so uh, these two seats can share a meal here or um, two people can watch a movie my um, laptop connects to my surround sound so people can watch TV or a movie together um, it's also a great place to work uh, when you've got a view uh, I do have a leg for it for extra stability you know if I'm really gonna be like putting some on it um, especially like the stove like I said earlier it's a great other like counter space and it just tucks away on a couple of simple hinges I bungee it so it doesn't rattle too much and on the inside here is where all of my uh, stickers go because in the van world there's a billion of them this is round two I've been out for like two months, so I have like a few of these boards ready to be swapped out and soon things will start to get overlapped, um, but I love that. So uh, with this table, um, I, as much positive things as I can say about it, it doesn't get used too often because I'd rather just have the door open. I mean, we just closed the cat out. He'd be pretty pissed if I left him out there. Um, I like the fresh air. I'm so glad that I have this space for like when weather isn't conducive, but generally I'm in places that are nice weather or right at the beach, and so I'd rather just have the door open. The other like sort of negative thing about it is, I mean, it's wonderful and versatile, but uh, like the other night I was sitting in here with a friend and we were having um, dinner and talking. We had like, uh, you know, all our stuff set up and somebody came to see us. And like I couldn't open the door like without us moving all of our stuff it happened at a gathering where we were playing a game here and some people came over and like you know this seat is pretty much swiveled around all the time and so it's not really a door that you climb through and um, so that's kind of the bummer is that when it's up the door is not really functional um, but it's still a great table I just I don't use it all the time I'm glad it's there but I don't use it all the time it's great for I mean mostly it's great for work 
you know, when I when I've got to be inside and focus. When the door is open and I'm trying to get work done, um, people stop by and say hi and want to pet the cat and whatnot. So if I need to get work done, it's nice to close it up. I can see out, but they're not going to be asking me a million questions about. Oh my gosh, you work in there? You live in there? You poop in there? So, you know, the usuals. This window I'm pretty proud of. I obviously put in both windows. This is a CR Lawrence window. It's great. It's very hot right now. Um, it, uh, I put this in in the desert at RTR this year. I brought it out there and I didn't even bring tools. I just like wrote, like, put hope in the community that I was going to be with that they would have what I needed. And they did. And then some. And so I cut a hole in the desert in my van. And yeah, it was a, it was perfectly supported situation. I was like, I wound up being like the smartest person, smartest place to do a project. Um, also, I guess I validated myself with everybody. Everybody was like, oh my God, you're such a badass. I think everybody suddenly forgot I built this whole van. <laughs> so uh, everybody got to see me do this, which was nice because then they celebrated me. So um, everybody likes to be celebrated, right? Praise for your badassery. All right, well, now that we've gone through all the business aspects of the house, Welcome to my bedroom. Uh, I love my bedroom. I'm just gonna say that right now. I get invited to stay in people's like guest bedrooms all the time. I love this bed. I bought an amazing memory foam, like bamboo mattress um, on Amazon. It was completely affordable. It's a full size. It's about eight inches deep and I'm in love guys, like this bed is amazing. It's also a nice little cozy nook. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pillows back here. One is a body pillow, so I just keep, um, I keep it nice and cozy back here. Everything is accessible, which is wonderful. Um, from over here, I actually have a little nightstand. So um, I can use my uh, laptop here or work on an art project. Um, I've got a couple that I'm working on. This um, tray moves around. So I had an original design um, to, uh, let's see. So the original design had just this table and this was on a hinge back here, just like the table in the doorway. So the idea was that I could tuck it away and swing it up, but that didn't work out well because I just had one hinge and then no matter how tight I made it, it wobbled. So this was like a weird, I don't know, storage tray or something that I had at the last place. So I combined the two, now I have a permanent a bedside table. The nice part about it actually is that I wind up moving it around. Sometimes I sit here and and work with it over my lap um, so I can see out the door. Sometimes I stand in the front um, kind of where you're positioned now and set it up here and just work standing up with the doors open to look out. Um, so I actually quite enjoy that it's more versatile now and not just stuck to the wall. And then I just hide my big blankets, my like blankets I don't need right now because it's warm. Um, underneath it and um, if that blanket's not there then Cashew loves this nook it's this little like cave so um, so that works out well for me um, I am not very productive when I'm sitting right back here so sometimes if I turn around and open the doors I can be or if I move to the end of the bed but if I'm laying here I'm generally like watching the office <laughs> or like reruns of Grey's Anatomy, like being a bum and not doing much. So um, that's also the nice part about being in a van is it's like a way cheaper per diem, like Netflix and chill days. So that's awesome. I feel way less guilty about it. These uh, hooks are incredibly useful. Obviously, I keep trying to downsize stuff off of them and I use everything on here. I access everything on here. The only negative is that I don't like that it like it really does kind of encroach in my bed space with in addition to the counter space like now it's really just like a single bed for sure if I were to invite somebody over uh, it would be kind of cramped in here I think and so unless we like took those things off of that part of those hooks so it's got its pros and cons. I haven't found a better solution yet. Um, and so far, anybody who's made it in this bed hasn't complained, so sweet. Uh, over here, uh, the storage is a tad deceiving because when I built the walls, I put up 
a frame because nothing in my van is square I'm sure if you heard that before and in an attempt to make it easier on myself I put up wall like a wall frame and that wound up eating up a lot of inches outside so these were supposed to be about 12 inches deep and they are not so I had to get creative with the way that I store the things in here I use packing cubes the, the slim ones because that's about all that will fit in here and I also use um, containers to store things in so they stay organized so like for instance up here uh, in one of them I have like my games and my socializing with friends some zombie dice the other one is more like bathroom things uh, vitamins and um, contact solution more contacts aloe um, so that's how I keep those organized up here. You can see it is like incredibly small. These are not deep covered. So it looks really nice. Like I have lots of storage, but I really don't. Um, especially if you consider that these two are also occupied. So up here is where my electrical system lives and my nail polish. So uh, I have a full electrical system that I installed myself. I've got two 100 watt panels on the roof that feed down into here and then my charge controller that powers just a few things, really not very many things, a couple of things I've told you about. And that um, it all gets fed to my lithium ion battery that's stored in my garage. So it's like all the way underneath and below here. And between the charge control and the battery is my inverter and which is now beeping at us right on cue huh obviously i'm having a power issue right now let's see what's going on because like it's so sunny out here there's no reason that i should be beeping this is the real van life um if you want to see how i check this out so this whole system runs on a bluetooth system so i have an app that i'm going to pull up and it's going to tell me uh, what is happening, uh, what, what it's pulling, and why it's beeping at me, why it has no power. Because it is uh, clearly very sunny outside. So yeah, for some reason it's really not pulling much. I pulled a lot today, I can't quite tell. I mean, I have very low voltage, so that's why it was beeping. But I'm not really quite sure why I have such low voltage when I've been sitting in the sun for hours. Yeah, that's, I'm just gonna have to work on figuring that out. The mysteries of van life. So, yep, when my inverter gets low, that's all it does, it just beeps, just like you just heard it do, and so it tells me when to turn it off. And uh, another way that I power all this is that I also do have an isolator that is, um, you know, underneath my front, my driver's seat. So, if it weren't so blazing sunny out here, I could also just, like, kick my engine on or even put it into the, the key into the second position and get just a little bit more juice for a little bit longer. Um, I also carry a jump pack with me, so if I really were to like screw the pooch and overutilize my engine battery, um, then I can always jump that as well. So having showed you guys all those other cupboards, here's like really how things live. Uh, like I said, I've got all these packing cubes for each one of my like clothing items. Sweaters and larger items are kind of shove up here. Um, and uh, then this is all just like more like bathroom stuff, um, some like art supplies and like, you know, projects and stuff. I'm constantly downsizing my clothes, it feels like. I don't really know how to get less, but because the space is so limited, like um, if, if they were if they were as deep as I wanted them to be, I would have no problems housing all of my clothes. In fact, I could probably store some of the stuff that's up here in them. Um, but unfortunately, that just didn't work out that way. So I I use everything that I have. But I should still probably have less because there is um, a, like a basket of dirty laundry that's not in here and it's like stuffed to the gills. So I don't really have space for that. <laughs> it'll get washed and it'll sit until these get more empty. <laughs> like, so that's frustrating. At this point, yeah, I don't, I don't know what better I can do, but just keep working on it and keep trying to downsize. Um, finding items that uh, serve multiple functions is like really the key to my success but I mean guys I got rid of a lot of stuff I have like time-lapse videos of me con marrying all my clothes and like I'm like buried in my stuff in the living room so this is pretty good I can't believe I can fit into these tiny little packing cubes 
Um, because the cupboards are supposed to be so deep, this cover was always designed not to have a face on it. It was always going to be open and it was intended to be a nook for my previous cat. And then I would try and like insulate it and keep it nice and cool and give him a little like hideaway space. Now it's not that because it's not deep. So now it's my bedside table and it's just like I attached a box, like I Velcroed it. So that's got all kinds of like loose stuff. You know, you're just your regular stuff, my Invisalign and my chapstick and stuff. And then um, books and journals and things. And then um, Kleenex. Yeah, so like I utilize this um, all the time. Um, and uh, I'm glad that I went with this for the design. I want to give this to you. It's my Christmas card. <laughs> Going on the fridge. Yes, perfect. Uh, yeah, so that's what that's for is for my Christmas cards. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then I know I talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, let me go ahead and show you a little bit of that headboard. Um, I cover it up with my 18 pillows, but it is beautiful. And from the garage side, I'll show you, it actually is um, also quite beautiful. Um, and then I have a couple of instruments in here. I have a Kala um, beautiful Oregon green ukulele back here that was gifted to me. And then, actually both of my instruments were gifted to me. And then I just got this kalimba and it's made out of a gourd and that's been really fun to like learn how to play. And so, um, yeah, like I said, there's like almost everything in here is either given to me or has sentimentality, pictures of my family. Uh, dream catchers. One was a birthday gift this year. The other was a gift when I was like 15 years old. So a long time ago. Um, and so, um, each one of these things all like holds like a special purpose. So I love being in this space because it just, it is home no matter where I'm at, I'm at home right here. Okay, so I know that I said that I have a lot of pillows, um, but staying warm in here is obviously key. One thing I want to say also is that micro fleece sheets are amazing for van life. It wicks the moisture away. I got this idea from um, boat owners actually. So like if I'm sweaty or if there's just a, a small spill or if there's condensation in the house, um, maybe the heater's been running or something, uh, then um, it actually like does not stay wet like a cotton, like a cotton sheet wood so that was vital for um, for my bed and then this blanket is also like amazing and vital so this blanket is by a company called voided and it is uh, made with a recycled material and like recycled plastics it's a hundred percent waterproof it came out of that pillow which is like another great part like I'm always folding the blankets up and trying to find other places for them so now I have this blanket that folds right into a pillow I mean guys this is so cool you can like snap it together and make a sleeping bag if I wanted to take it out also I took it to a concert recently and it was started raining and I just like wrapped it around me and buttoned it and it was like my waterproof blanket cape so this thing is like amazing it'll just like stuff right back in its pillow and then it's not like it makes that space feel a little less like cluttered and, and messy which in the van world it like takes very little to feel like that so um, it's nice to have a little bit of like you know consistency and cleanliness so now that I've showed you everything in here and in my bedroom, I think we should go check out the garage, see what's back there. Alrighty, well here we are. My favorite part, the rear. Uh, this is where all the good stuff gets stored, right? So this is like my garage slash basement. A uh, couple of great features are that my stereo actually has the ability to switch over to my house battery. So these speakers out here really bump the music and these doors can either be locked in this position or I can swing them completely around and open them all the way up. And so I can really like be the DJ for any kind of situation. Um, I store obviously some workout equipment. This is my hike pack with um, Cashew so he can breathe and go hiking with me. And then a dry bag for rivers. I just got a bicycle. So uh, that fits really well in here. And uh, I've got my helmet and some weights and stuff. So just kind of some, you know, activity stuff. A hatchet for when you need it, a hammock. These Eno hammocks are amazing. They go anywhere. I know what you're thinking this is. It's not what you think it is. It's bowling shoes. <laughs> most, uh, most vanners have rock climbing shoes. 
I got bowling shoes. Well, so these bowling shoes actually um, came to me. I'm not like an avid bowler, but um, I went to a bowling alley in Portland uh, for my birthday a few years ago, and it was just about to close down, and the shoes that I rented are practically brand new. They're adorable, and they're cute, and so they told me that I could keep them if I wanted to because they were closing down, so I can't get them out now. But so. I've got bowling shoes. So we went bowling for my birthday this year on the road and somebody gave me bowling socks. They have little pins and stuff on them. So now that's where they live. Um, as often as I can, bowling is fun. So you wanna go bowling? What are you doing later? You wanna go bowling? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, practical stuff up here. Like I said, this headboard is beautiful. If I ever wanted to detach it and just have the bed um, be out the back doors, that's also an option. Here's my extra four gallons of water. Empty right now. And uh, weird Japanese snacks that I got in San Francisco. I'm just like save them for weird days that I want to try new random snacks that don't have English on them. So yeah, that's my bag of like fun snacks. And a camp chair, you know. I would love to get something like smaller as far as like real estate wise, but like it's such a great chair once it's out, so. Until one finds me, that one is my my bike, or my is my chair. Um, I have oh, this is really cool. Uh, so the astroturf actually goes onto my roof, and uh, the roof supports plenty of people. We've had six people up there um, at a time, and it's perfect for sunrise and sunsets. And so it just folds up and stays in this bag. Thank you to Ashley and her family who gifted me this turf. And so I just slide it right in, and it stays in the back. I've got some chains back there and some electrical cords. I've got extra insulation and uh, a cable lock and a shovel all strapped to the bed. Uh, I've got a small table for bringing out and setting up for cooking outdoors or for doing anything, right? And then this is actually my ladder. And um, I purposely got a ladder that stays inside of my van for safety purposes. So it comes out and it actually goes up to 12 feet so I can access the roof and then like when I pick up odd jobs painting I can also use it there and I've also loaned it to a few other friends in Vance who don't have ladders so that they can access their roof. So for me this ladder was like a, a, a kind of like the fan it was kind of non-negotiable it made the choice for itself based on my needs. So over here we've got all kinds of more storage and stuff so rain boots, soccer ball for fun times, um, I have a yoga mat that sits in here. I have a, a rug that goes in front of my front door if I'm gonna be parked um, for any significant amount of time. This um, jug itself has all kinds of camping and river equipment in it. So um, that's really helpful, extra river sandals and the floaties and um, all the things you need. This is actually something I just got, which is super cool. It's an oven that goes on top of your stove, so um, it works on top of my propane, and it's kind of um, it's kind of Dutch oven style. It's from a company called Omnia, and it is awesome for those who just have a stove in their um, in their van. It's great for baking up some things. So I made a quiche in it recently, and it was amazing. So that's mostly what's down here. Um, in here, this is actually this is actually a giant bug out bag. Um, I come from Portland. I had many earthquake prepared kits and so I downsized them and that's what I've got. I mean, it seems stupid not to have it on board because it makes no sense to, for it to be in a storage unit, but I mean, obviously I rarely use it, but it is just like, it is legit like a bug out bag. It's got all kinds of survival equipment and extra stuff, mountain meals, extra sweatshirt, socks, shoes. Basically, if I needed to get the heck out of an area, I would just grab this bag and the cat. I should probably put cat food in there, actually. But uh, yeah, so that's, it is what it is. I think ultimately I'd like to find a spot for it maybe deeper in, but then again, is that really emergency preparedness? I don't know. So then I've got tools. All my tools are over here. Uh, power tools and hand tools. And then first aid kit, medicine cabinet, and extra hardware. All kinds of sprays for water repellents and spider scorpion killers. Because um, if you don't know my story, I've uh, had encounters with both of these in my bed trying to kill me. So keep that on board. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much everything that's on board is for safety or it's practical. Um, there's very few frivolous things, um, especially in my trunk. There's always room for 
a stand-up paddleboard if anybody wants to gift that my direction that would be fun and I'd like to add that of course I'd like to add some like maybe some winter sports to it maybe add a, a rock climbing shoe bag as well to the collection but right now I'm very happy with everything that's in here it brings a lot of adventure and it's all pretty accessible and organized for the most part so um, I think that this is yeah, where all this where all the fun stuff gets stored so kind of like I was saying before um, and when I got into van life I jumped in not really knowing that van life was a thing or that there was multiple vehicles that you could do this within somebody had just told me about sprinters and so um, I saw those and I and I kind of committed to it I jumped right in like feet first I thought I gotta get one of those it didn't really occur to me to shop around um, luckily that was the only piece of the process that I did not shop around everything else I definitely did comparisons and prices and um, pros and cons so I jumped a little hastily into the sprinter however I knew what I was looking for um, this is a diesel and so um, it has relatively low miles. I bought it with 108,000. And um, I like to say that I rescued her. She came from a fleet of vehicles hauling laundry chemicals before. So it took me weeks of elbow grease to get this even down to like a a square one state uh, there was spilled sodas and coffee all kinds of like in the dash and in the front and cab area there were terrible laundry sm like chemical smells in the back I found old french fries and all kinds of nooks and crannies and it ultimately had been neglected for a long time as far as anybody who drove it didn't own it and so they drove it as such and so she got ran pretty pretty hard and rough and so now I just do my best to like um, treat her right and get all the right mechanics to it I got a pretty good price buying it through um, an auction like a dealer's auction um, in the Pacific Northwest uh, I could have turned it around in Vegas and brought it back and marked it up 60% but I already been shopping for four months for a sprinter with low miles and I was eager to get my project started so this is a 2011 and um, I get an average of 19 miles per gallon. I keep a log of all my um, everywhere that I fill up and how much I put in and all the all the in interesting information. So um, it's pretty fascinating. I would suggest anybody do that so that you can really see what's going on with your vehicle. You can also really watch trends as far as like gas prices and things like that. I use an app to help me find good um, diesel fuel prices everywhere that I go. I'm I'm happy with it. I think that when it comes comes to your vehicle that there isn't necessarily a wrong way to do it there's only a, like a right way for you and this works for me I um, it's reliable I, I got what I paid for I paid more up front and I pay more for like service and products but like a Mercedes is a pretty reputable like long-standing company and sprinters have been on the market for a long time they have run through a few different models the old models are still running like champs as long as they're taken well well care of and ultimately I'm not like depreciating in value at all I mean I, if anything I've put more value into this by taking it off the lot and putting 20,000 miles on it than um, I think you could do with pretty much any other vehicle so so far I've been happy she comes with her quirks but who the heck doesn't and I definitely refer to my van as a crew member um, when I talk about like oh we're headed to Colorado next week or we're thinking about adopting a dog uh, the we is me and the cat in the van we're a we're a crew and we all function together and we all need fuel and water and love and maintenance and if one of us breaks down none of us are going anywhere so we gotta gotta like function together I can't I can't not think of the van as another one of the crew members on this journey and just like my plants I give her plenty of positive reinforcement and encouragement and appreciation and she just kind of keeps returning that favor so this uh, wall here was like uh, it serves multiple functions obviously it holds the spices on the other side but it's really helpful on this side it holds um, just like roadside um, sort of items hat and bags fanny pack purse and umbrella so that's been really helpful to have on this side also it gives me a little bit of peace of mind if I were ever to slam on the brakes that nothing from the kitchen or the back would ever come flying through and potentially hit or impale me I mean we've all seen Final Destination so we know that the knives in the back are just looking for me in an accident 
Uh, up here, I love these shelves. I really ultimately like to build a shelf um, into this headliner space, but these shelves are amazing. I use baskets for both sides. Um, as in the van, you kind of got to just put stuff where you can put stuff. So my makeup bag is up here. Sunglasses and deodorant are in here. And um, over here, I've got um, some like warm layers as well as I keep a Smith & Wesson knife um, accessible right here. So it's a, not only a weapon, it's also got like, um, it's like their paramedics model. So it'll cut my seatbelt off if I ever need it. Um, to be cut out for any quick reason. It also will break a window um, with the end of it. It has like a little knob on it. So I like to keep that handy and accessible for being in the front seat. Uh, and then, you know, you've always got to have friends. I keep um, my, my best friend, Jonathan, is one of the people I lost that like encouraged me or his loss motivated me and inspired me to get out and live life. And he traveled with Lego Wolverine and we traveled together quite often. So um, after he passed, his wife gave me uh, Lego Wolverine. And the other few items that I've got up here all like have just sort of come from people and places who have gifted them to me from remi reminders to breathe through anxiety. And um, I've got all my um, national parks, um, like uh, visitor center packets up in the front. Um, a bunch of postcards that I'm still waiting to send out, but um, ultimately, like, it's really functional space up here. I actually do want to talk about what I've got on my window here. These things are super cool. They come from a company called Rainbow Symphony, and they're just decals that, like, stick on your window, but when the sun hits them, these, like, amazing rainbows bounce into the van, and so just, like, pings these rainbows everywhere in the area, these prisms, and especially when there's a kitten on the seat and there's all rainbows on them, it's amazing. So whether you live in a van or a house or whatever, like check out Rainbow Symphony because those are so cool and they come in all different kinds of decals. These are like the planetary ones, but they come in all different kinds of like designs and stuff. And then uh, I think actually the other thing I didn't talk about up front is that the cat litter box is in front of this passenger's front seat. Um, the seat is almost always turned around and laid back so I can still see the mirror out the window. The cat has a nook for where he goes to the bathroom and then um, there is a furnace underneath that seat and it runs on my diesel. It's a Webasto and it's just like super low energy and uh, low diesel um, usage so that keeps me warm in the cold winter months. But yeah, I mean, I, like I said, you get what you pay for. So like it, Mercedes, like I broke this visor. So, so it is like a hundred bucks to replace it. And so now you gotta think I gotta put up a, um, a window shade like pretty much every night. And if I don't have a visor to help hold it over there, I had to like jimmy rig it. So I like use a little clip and everything to like, you know, hang it all in there. You know, the way we just like make things work. And funny little story, I was coming back into the front seat um, after I just pulled over to pee on a long road trip and I was coming back into the front seat the other day and I caught my foot on something in the back and I like fell forward and on the other one I fell and hit my face like right here like I smacked my eye and for two days I had a black eye like it was so bad it was all swollen it like went underneath it was all black under here yeah so uh, that's what I like to call a van accident, an accident in the van, where you just, whoops. And so, uh, yeah, the fun never stops in the small spaces. <laughs> um, as much as I love the shelves, they will fight back. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming by and visiting my place. It's always great to have visitors. And I think uh, I think you guys have made it to be the most visitors I've ever had in my van at one point. So I'm so glad you guys came by and checked it out. You can follow me and more of my adventures. I have a website and a YouTube channel and an Instagram. And they're all Sam Van Zam. So my name is Sam and I live in a van. And my last cat's name was Zamboni. So there you go, Sam Van Zam. Uh, when you when you find me, say hi, because I'm obviously super approachable. I'm obviously like a real jerk, so just like screw off, guys. No, say hi and tell me where you came from, and um, I hope to see you on the road, because this life is amazing. And if it's for you, get out there and grab it, man. Quit waiting. Adventure before dementia. Mm -hmm.